Hello everyone and Merry Christmas. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, Money Monday and we're going to talk about something that can destroy your Christmas and also just make your new year off to a really bad start. So we're hopefully going to give you some tips and tricks to make not only this Christmas amazing, but next Christmas even better. Yep. So I'm Jay. This is Krista. <laughs> See, I do forever coming at you. Money Monday. And we are having a little Shirley Temple Roy Rogers. <laughs> this and is a, this one of our stuff. favorite drinks. What is your favorite drink? I love a little Shirley Temple. Ever since I met Jay, when we go to decorate the Christmas tree or anything like that, he gets me a um, Shirley, Shirley Temple. Temple. I've got my little cherries down in there. My little... It's good stuff. What is in it? Um, grenadine. Uh, grenadine. Uh, cherry grenadine syrup and cherries and 7-Up. What other drinks do you like for Christmas? Um, we got the Roy Rogers, which is Coke or Pepsi, and um, grenadine syrup, mm -hmm. and that's really yummy. Yeah, uh, eggnog mm -hmm. is always good. Eggnog is very good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that hate eggnog, but I like eggnog, eggnog which is surprising because I'm thinking about everything. I mean, I can have eggnog on a small level, but yeah, like I can't drink a big old glass like you can. I'm like, bring it on. Just <laughs> 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 well, today we're talking about Money Monday, and like we said, we've been um, going over some proverbs, and one of these proverbs, a couple of the verses, really reminded us of Christmas and of overspending and spending beyond your means. And you're not alone if you've done that, because we've done it many, many years, especially when we had young kids, and we felt like yeah. we didn't have much but we really felt like we wanted to give them a good Christmas. Yep. And that makes it hard. Or when family expectations are on you, or... Well, um, you have this guilt to spoil your children. You know, you put it on yourself. I mean, we put it on ourselves. You know, we want to give them this, that, and the other. And it's like, they may have been totally content with just coloring books and crayons, but you know, mm -hmm. deep down you really wanted to go all out. And, uh, so yeah. And you don't want them to feel bad when they go back to school and everybody else got something different. Yeah, I got this, it's Susie keep, got it's that, It's keeping up with Jimmy the Jones's, Jones's yeah. kids. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and you don't want to have to deal yeah. with that. Yeah, so this verse really just, one of these verses, there's a couple of verses, but uh, this one, Proverbs 21, 17, correct? Yep. It says, uh, those, those who love pleasure become poor. Those who love wine and luxury will never be rich. And that's a hard one because uh, everybody loves a little luxury. Everybody loves a little pleasure. Right. Um, we all like to maybe go on a great vacation. We all like to um, have a little, you know, I don't know, just a little fanciness in our lives. Oh, yeah. But a lot of times, when did America get to the point where we have to live better than our parents did at their older years when they actually had earned the money to get into a certain size house and they'd kind of climb the ladder. At one point, what we had to do was, it's like, well, my parents have that style of house or that um, level. Yeah. So going in, like as newlyweds, we wanted that. Instead of realizing all through American history, um, people start with small homes or you know they build up they save their money and then they uh would end up um you know getting the bigger house as they got older and i think what really kicked that whole spiral downward into the money pit of life is um when the company that invented the diners club card came mm. about um if it wasn't for them people would have still been saving money and paying cash for what they buy uh, Diners Club was the first card that you could use to dine locally um, and then came along Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American mm -hmm. Express, and everybody else, Capital One, you name it, you, you guys all know. So it all started with Diners Club. So I think if Diners Club wouldn't have came on the scene, I think the outcome of the debt mm -hmm. and all that stuff would have been different. Yes, definitely. You know. My computer, sorry. Oh, Just... no, it's fine. <laughs> Go ahead. <clears throat> but anyway, I think that is the biggest downfall, I think, that people ever came across because that started the whole snowball effect of debt. Of living beyond what living, you have. Living because beyond your means. Because before you would make a paycheck, you would have that money, 
and that's what you had to go out and buy things yep. with. And then if you wanted something bigger, like a house or a car, you were like taking a little bit of that each month, putting yep. it aside yep. in your little far, uh, Folgers jar or can yep. in the cupboard and to purchase that. And then you're right, the Diners Club came along and they offered the fact that you don't necessarily have to have the money right now. You can enjoy life and pay later. And they set it up with local restaurants in that area when Diners Club mm -hmm. first was invented. You're so right. And it, it was certain restaurants that said that they, yeah, they will take the card. Mm -hmm. And so then started the whole, well, I'll eat now and pay later and then I'll pay interest on my meal, but who cares because I didn't have to come up with cash mm -hmm. up front and you know, you got that whole snowball effect. So, and we did get into that mentality and I think Christmas kind of rolled into that uh, yes. too, because um, yeah, maybe that month you didn't have the money, but you can just put it on a credit card or spend a little bit extra on Christmas. You'll figure it out in the new year. But then you wake up on, you know, January 1st and you're kind of like, oh man. And then you're looking at the credit card bill that says minimum amount due and it's like a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's going to end up being a lot over all the next 10, 11 months that you're paying that bill till mm -hmm. you get around to Christmas. And Chris and I, when uh, we were walking, um, you know, I had mentioned to her, it's kind of like a, um, just a, uh, a cycle. A, yeah. It's like a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, you spend all the money on your credit cards, then you think you're giving your kids a great Christmas. So when all the newness wears off and all the pile of toys are in the corner or they break or whatever, and then now you have all this debt to pay from January to November, and then you pay it all off. Hopefully by mm -hmm. November, your credit cards are all freed up. Now you're ready <laughs> to spend way beyond your means to spoil your kids rotten, which they don't need a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff anyway. Not every six year old or eight year old needs a phone, a cell phone. But so you spend beyond your means and then you hit January 1st and you relive that cycle all over again. So, I mean, it makes sense to put money aside and Krista brought, why don't you talk to him about that? Putting yeah. money aside every month. So this Christmas, you can try really, really hard to cut some costs, but maybe you've already made some commitments that you can't get out of. We're only a few weeks away from Christmas now. So maybe you've already made some commitments. You're already trying to meet family obligations that you're going to bring buy dinner here or there or whatever. But as you're going through this year, write everything down that you're spending and kind of put an uh, asterisk by the things that you know are things that you definitely want to spend next year. Their money, you know, you and you create a budget for what you're going to spend for 2022 Christmas. So already start figuring that out. And then as you go into January, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, when you create your budget for January, is you're going to take that amount that you need for Christmas, you're gonna split it up, divide it by 12, and you're going to put that amount in a separate savings account. What you wanna do is protect this from other things. You don't wanna buy school clothes with this money. You don't wanna pay a bill with this money unless there's an emergency but you're right. going to put that money into a Christmas fund, maybe even just an envelope with cash, okay? Yep. And then next year, you're gonna be set up with a budget that we are going to spend this amount. This is what we, you know, it doesn't matter how much, you guys decide how much you wanna spend. Do you wanna go all out or do you want to maybe cut some stuff back? That's a decision between you and your spouse but if you have a budget and you already have the money in that cash envelope or you already have that money in a Christmas account, next year you won't have to even pull out any credit cards. Right. All you have to do is pull that money out and say, this is what we have budgeted and let's do Christmas. Right? And the, yeah. And the best part is after you get set with your budgeting for Christmas for each month up mm -hmm. into November or Black Friday or wherever you're going to do your shopping, then you will have bought all the Christmas presents because you have that money budgeted, then you can cut up all those credit cards and close the accounts because you don't need a credit card. Yeah. We, we don't have credit cards. We have a debit card. Yeah. And we have savings and we're doing just great. 
Yeah, you do so, not need to spend that extra money or you don't need to spend money that's above what you're making. That's where you get into trouble is when you are spending like you make here and your spending is here. That's when you're going to get into a hole. When you make this much, you want to be spending down here. So this top part is actually helping you uh, become richer. Um, yep. It's investing. Yep. It's got it's money that you're giving away. So you want all your expenses to be down here. And m most of America is like this. And after a couple of years of that, you're in a giant hole and you can't get out. Yeah, then, then the gap between you actually being able to get a handle on things is here and the debt is like way up here. Mm -hmm. And then that's when people get into trouble and Americans do it all the time. Yeah. Um, we learned the hard way years and years ago. We're not gonna do it anymore. And that's why we have a debit card and we don't have credit cards. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what people say, oh yeah, well I pay it off before the interest is all due. It's like, credit card is just bad. I don't care what anybody says. They're getting it from somewhere. Yep. <laughs> um, and yep. then that brings us to another verse is um, Hebrews uh, 13.5. We really love this verse. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Yep. Being content is such a key to not only peace in your life, peace in your family, peace in your marriage, yep. um, peace in your finances. Yep. Being content is just a huge, um, a huge thing. Yeah. Most of the world doesn't have all that we have here in America we are living at such an extreme level and we can take it down a notch and just look around and just still be thankful and also um the other thing i wanted to say was that your children need more experiences with you than they need stuff yep um the stuff they're going to open christmas morning it is fun so a couple great gifts is great because it just seeing them light up when they you know open it up but if you are filling that tree full and everything is about the gifts that you're buying them, then in those hour or however long it takes to open those gifts, it's pretty much going to be gone because that's where your excitement is. Yep. But if you're taking a little less money and you're putting it into experiences, right. you know, sitting around the uh, fire with uh, a cup of cocoa, um, going Christmas caroling. You know, you can look up online all the different things you can do with children um, to go look at Christmas lights, let them all get in the car and pile in. We it's, do that every year. <laughs> it's a shame that that the commercialized or commercialism of Christmas has made things, has painted a picture that has taken families spending quality time together and having fun with your kids into you need to um, purchase as much junk as you can to give them a temporary happiness that won't that last fades. and that's not going to give them good memories what's going to give them good memories is you spending time with your family mm -hmm. you can't have any nobody can ever take your memories away if you're spending time with your family exactly you know um the phone or whatever or laptop or stereo or whatever it's going to be a temporary happiness, but mm -hmm. the memories that you make with your family will always be with you. Yeah. So, a, I mean, that's... A couple of, I mean, think back to your childhood. Uh, <clears throat> there were a handful of gifts that I remember. I mean, there were just a couple. If my parents would have got me just those kind of memorable ones and not all the little filler gifts, I don't remember probably 99% of the gifts I was given as a child. But I remember every year my uh, dad would come home from work and he would say do you want to get the christmas tree tonight and we would all get so excited and we would just walk around and try to pick the perfect christmas tree and i think we went to like five different lots and always ended up back at the first one but it was a whole <laughs> night adventure of you know hunting yeah that's what i remember and then i also remember uh you know just uh sitting around the Christmas tree. I remember the carols that we would sing as 
my dad would flip on the lights. He would um, make our Christmas uh, really amazing as far as he wouldn't light up any of the lights. He'd string the whole tree, we'd decorate the whole tree, and then we'd turn off all the lights in the house, and he'd flip the lights on all at once, so it was like this, ta-da! Ta so it's a ta-da <laughs> moment, that's good. Yeah, and that's so really cool. it's those little things, just putting a little eff extra effort and less money into the experiences. Your children will remember those for a lifetime. I remember every one of those. Yep. I remember baking cookies with my mom. You know, those are the memories that I treasure. Yeah, and I know that our kids, they remember some good times too, you know, mm -hmm. of some Christmases that they have good memories of. Hopefully a lot of them, but uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think that this isn't just Christmas. I think this is year round. Yeah, it's like everything. If we learn everything. to live under <clears throat> what we make, and if we learn to be content with what we have, Yep. Imagine where, where we'll be next year at this time. Think about where your family will be financially next year at this time. If you take just a little bit more contentment and spend a little bit less and really evaluate those things that are priorities in your life. Yeah, even at the beginning of 2023, you know, where do you want to be? Do you want to be still up to debt to your eyeballs or do you want to actually get a handle on things and, and better your yourselves because it's going to take a lot of stress off your marriage. Your relationship is going to get a lot better if you don't have all this debt piled on your shoulders and weighing you down and feel like you're sinking. Mm -hmm. So it's it's uh, something to think about for yeah. sure. So we hope, you know, this may not, this is a small step that you can mm -hmm. take. It may not fully affect you this year, but be thinking ahead of next year and how you're going to make that an even better year. Yeah. Absolutely. And here's to Christmas That's and right. oh, Christmas and 2022. 2022. Right around the corner. Till next time. Mm -hmm. Jay Krista, helping you say I do forever. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas and we love you guys. <laughs>